Welcome to The Sacred Life. I'm Shan Vanderleek, founder of TransformationGoddess.com. And every month, I share transformational conversations with women who've learned to walk in beauty with the strength, courage, and pleasure of reclaiming their feminine sovereignty. Women all over the world are rising up to have their voices heard. And I invite you to join in the conversation. Today, it's an honor to introduce you to my friend, Kat Tozier. Kat is a mystic medicine woman and women's trauma expert, helping you get clear on who you really are and create the life you came to live. Through a combination of numerology, astrology, tarot, intuitive guidance, plus 20 years of experience in mind, body, spirit, wellness, Kat works with women to empower them to heal themselves physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. She is the host of the Celestial Story podcast and the founder of mysticcat.com and livetruetoyou.org. Welcome, Kat. Hey, Shan. I am so excited to be here with you today. I've looked forward to this all week. Oh, I have too. It's, it's so good to be with you again. It's been a while since our last conversation on the podcast, and it was nice to catch up with you before we began recording as well. It's always fun to chit chat with you. We have so many um, points where we hit common interests and common ground. So we have fun and great conversations every yes. time. Yes, we do. So we'll, we'll continue that then. Um, I want to start our conversation today about you embracing becoming a woman's trauma expert. Because I knew you before you, uh, you, you stood up and, and shared this with the world and started to really openly share your gifts in supporting women through, tra- through trauma. Mm, that's been a very, very gigantic journey on multiple levels for me. I mean, right across the board, body, mind, spirit, most definitely. Because, you know, stepping into really opening up about how I've been traumatized. And I think that's true for all women, regardless of the details. For me, it happens to be domestic abuse. And it's just really, really hard, regardless of what the details of our traumas are, to want to speak about it in the world. Sometimes it's difficult to even just talk to your best friend or a sibling or someone in your family. Never mind talk about this kind of stuff publicly. Because we all have that little piece of programming that says whatever it is that happened to us at the bottom line is our fault. And so we have shame energy around it. Right. Even when our mind knows I did not cause this. I did not ask for this. I did not do this. There's so much programming that goes around trauma that to get brave enough and step forward and begin to talk about it is a monumental energetic, emotional, mental, spiritual thing. And, you know, so some of this journey for me, as I have, I've been in business virtually for about just coming up on five years, actually, it'll be the 12th of September will be the five year mark. So we're just coming up on the five year mark. And when I started out in business, I definitely wanted to help women, I wanted to help women with their body pain. I wanted to help women with their emotional pain, but I wanted to do it through practical means such as nutrition and yoga, because it was far less scary. Right. Go out and talk about, Hey, yoga really, really helps your body. If you've got fibromyalgia or you've got myofascial pain syndrome or, you know, whatever. And it was far less scary to do that. But the more I move forward on my journey and in the early stages of beginning to talk to women as clients, and for a while I did podcast interviews on a now retired Indomitable Women podcast, talking to other women about their journeys through adversity and challenge and how they overcame their adversities and challenges, it began to be really, really clear to me that there's such a collective wound. Mm, Without question. Without question. You know, this collective wound around what it means to be a woman in the world. Now, it goes without saying men are wounded as well, men are traumatized as well, and all of that. But my 
focus and my demographic is women and it's becoming much more women and their children nowadays because mm-hmm. the only way this is going to change is if we start changing what's going on with the ch- the, the current child generation and future child generations you know the only way we can turn the tide and as i talked more and more and recognize the collective wound and the collective experience and then began talking about and noticing similarities and commonalities with mother line in particular but family lines in general and ancestral inheritances around patterns of trauma again in my family the details happen to be a family line trauma of domestic violence and a great deal of anxiety issues, which of course the two kind of go together because you're hyper vigilant when there's domestic violence in the situation. And then began to recognize that we've sort of got this central personal experience of trauma and wounding in our lifetime. Then we have this rippled out from us collective women's experience of trauma that is circling all around us. And then we have this almost direct straight up and down our our chakras and our energy centers where we're storing the wounding of our family lines and the women in our family line. It's literally like we're at the center of all of this trauma energy coming Mm -hmm. at us from every direction. Oh yeah. And that's, I mean, that's one of the reasons why it's so important for us to do our healing work so that we can clean up those connections and and clean up for generations seven in front and seven behind for, when you when you do your healing work and and just clean it up and i'm so grateful that there are women in the world like you who have stepped forward and said you know what i do recognize this and i know that i can help and here's how mm. you know Absolutely. it's uh, so deep deep bow to you for this work that you're doing thank you that means a lot coming from you with all of the amazing work you do with women. And, you know, once I got focused on getting and working on my own stuff, a personal healing journey some more, because it's one thing that does happen is as we are doing these kinds of things and moving into the work we do and we work with women, you know, our own stuff gets really triggered as well. Mm-hmm. And so in working with that and really beginning to expand and step into the courage of starting to talk about far less mainstream things than nutrition and yoga, where I started out five years ago. All of that that process led me to really looking at, okay, so what is the foundation for every human, but again, my demographic, every woman? And I really began looking at the interweaving between astrology and our natal chart our natal energy who we came here to be the map and blueprint we gave ourselves at the soul level when we chose this incarnation and we downloaded to our 10th chakra the earth star chakra before we were even physically conceived in this world and in this incarnation and the um chronologic overlapping of energetic and emotional development through our chakra system, our in-body seven chakras that everybody is really well aware of. If they know anything about energy work, everybody can pretty much say, oh, there's seven chakras if they've had any exposure to chakras. But there are also five more spiritual level chakras. And there's a chronologic development and unfolding of those chakras in our corresponding auricular biofields. And so we've brought in this information at pre-incarnation of this blueprint map of our natal energy, exactly who we came here to be, and the chart that defines what we chose to do for this lifetime in terms of lessons, healing, purpose, legacy, mission, relationships, communication. I mean, anything and everything you could possibly imagine is in that chart and various permutations of that chart. And then the unfolding and the correspondence of unfolding to, of our energy, energy centers as we move through emotional developmental stages in childhood and then in the teen years and then in adulthood and the correspondence between the two. And I ultimately created 
an amazing system that is dead on accurate with every single client that I talk to, that I work with, every casual conversation that I have with people. And, you know, this whole system takes us right through the age of 56. And of course, it continues after that age, but we're okay. literally developing our energy system, our spiritual connection, our spiritual energy right up to the age of 56. And then we step in to the later years where all of it is active and we can still go back and do the work and so on. But then when you stop and think about that as, you know, the wise women of the older generation, it makes sense. It's just simply logical that we're still working on developing it until we're 56 years old. And when you look at the huge pool of midlife women right now who are all about Stepping in, I think you said in your introduction, rising up to not only heal themselves, but accelerate their spiritual journey and one after another after another, stepping into helping others in ways large and small at the family level, the community level, all the way up to the global level, and in all kinds of permutations of definition of what it is they're actually doing by way of tool techniques, methods, modalities. And it's not, not a big surprise that the midlife women are stepping up to this calling. And if I, if I can add a little sidebar, there is a chart pattern in the women who are in, from late 40s to mid 60s right now, if that's their current age, where the outer generational planets are in some formation connected together in every woman's chart who is from late 40s to mid 60s right now a pattern that is all about global transformation global change of paradigms and global breaking of illusion and denial because it's neptune pluto and uranus that are in aspect patterns in all of the women in that age demographic and ding, i ding, ding 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 <laughs> yes and i firmly believe the reason the midlife women have been having this mass awakening is because we were all pre, you know, we were predestined through our, our decisions about this lifetime and the time which, in which we chose to incarnate to, so that we would be middle aged at this time in, in our era of history and humanity because the midlife women are the ones that are supposed to lead the pack. Right. In terms of changing the world. Right. So. That makes me that makes me think of a quote that um, the Dalai Lama shared years ago, five or ten years ago. I don't remember when, but basically it was something along the lines of you know Western women um, or women. I don't know why I said Western women. No, Maybe. he did. It was Western. Did he say Western? Okay, Western Correct. Western women will save the world. Yep. You know? Yeah, the, the salvation of the world is in the hands of Western women. Something something along. Yeah, the way. yeah, and I thought, you know what? I'd like there was this deep knowing that that was absolutely the truth. Mm -hmm. Well, and there's another piece of it because there was a gap of time where those, those aspect patterns weren't there, but it's be, it began coming back right around the time of our millennial children. Right. And so our millennial children are also having these same formations in their That's natal so cool. It's so fascinating. In a slightly different, <laughs> it's a modify, it's a modification of what the midlife women have, but it's a very right. similar indication. And I've seen... I can't cite the studies or anything right now, but I have seen studies talking about how midlife women with millennial children or midlife mothers with millennial children have a different relationship with their children and the, the quote unquote generation gap is not there with millennial children and their moms in the way it has been for so many other generations. Even though we've, you know, in a lot of ways we have drastically different um, experiences and, and places and, you know, their experiences in life as young people compared to when we were that age and so on, the, the formation of the quote unquote generation gap is not showing up. The, the bond with millennial children is different. And I've read a lot of different pieces. Yeah. That, and I think it has everything to do with the fact that this, this energetic pattern is coming. Yeah, I think so too. I, my, my daughter is, um, is not considered a millennial, but close enough. Mm -hmm. And that is absolutely the case with us yeah. with, I mean, without question. And, and she, her energy is so powerful, so big. And she came in 
so incredibly discerning and responsible and aware and and ready and an advocate and i just watch her and i think wow wow what is what is going to happen with this one and uh and and i'm grateful that uh that we have the connection that we do and that and that she chose to come in at this time in the way that she has Mm -hmm. I'm going to switch gears a little bit here because there's a few more questions that I want to ask you and, and you and I can go on. Uh, <laughs> we have like part five of the conversation with Shannon <laughs> Pat. <laughs> it's so fun though. I mean, this stuff is so amazing. And it is. It really, really is. I, I, I want you to share with uh, our, our listeners a little bit about how you choreograph your sovereign and sacred life now. I know things have changed for you since our, our first conversation, and I think that you're very um, disciplined about how you create your world. And I'd love for you to share that. And then, of course, this, the sidebar to that, or the secondary piece to that, is then how that informs practicing how you embody your feminine sovereignty. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right that I'm in a drastically different place with all of that than I was when I started out on my journey five years ago. And then even when you and I spoke, well, I guess it's been a couple of years. I mm -hmm. it's like, because yeah, I think it was 2017, wasn't it? I think so. And a huge piece for me of my wounding was around the fact that I could never be first. I could never put myself first. I could never think of myself I always had to be vigilant around everyone else's well-being, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. I was responsible for making sure everybody else was okay, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And I could never, you know, ask to have my needs met or speak up or even expect to have my needs met. And I think in many ways, this is very a very, very common thing for so many women. And women very easily sacrifice themselves in their well-being, regardless of whether, you know, their situation, once again, their details go back to domestic violence like mine, or it's something else. I think it's a natural state that is part of that collective women's wounding and, you know, sacrificing ourselves and putting ourselves in second place and all that. So it all bears. But for me, it was this gigantic piece that kicked in tremendous levels of anxiety that created physiological symptoms in terms of you know heart pounding and sweats and you know stomach churning and digestive distress and pan even to the point of panic attack because to me it wasn't only i don't deserve to get my needs met or to ask my needs it's if i do someone is going to hit me or slap me or hurt me in some way so it was physical fear in addition to the just kind of the other emotional and mental struggles i think many women have it and so there was a lot of, there was a lot of reprogramming that went on around that for me and then the next key piece for me is of course i have a lot of responsibilities i have a business i have a family i have a home and so on and so forth and we are all very very busy especially in this day and age and our culture doesn't set up things for us to take a lot of downtime or draw pullback time and you know be offline and be away from devices and and so on. And so again, a whole collective piece of energy in addition to my own personal. And so I time and time again was pushing myself right to the limit and falling flat on my face and then take having to take huge recovery time because I would deplete myself physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, sometimes even financially. And so all of this came around to the acknowledgement that I deserve to take care of myself first, that if I don't take care of myself first, I cannot serve my clients and the people I'm here to help heal and work with. I cannot serve my family, my children, my grandchildren, and I can't handle any more being always in physical distress because, you know, all of that shows up as pain. It shows up as digestive pain. It shows up as digestive problems. It shows up as body pain. It shows up as migraines. It shows up as 
you know, you name it, physical symptoms when we're emotionally and mentally distressed. And so just stepping into, I will create a routine that serves me first. Mm. And, you know, doing the daily yoga practice and either t- being outside for a walk or using a treadmill if the weather here in Maine is not conducive to it at certain times. Right. You know, w- being um, on top of my nutrition and not skipping meals, making sure that I'm get- nourishing my body with food, whole food, well-sourced food, and, you know, not taking, grabbing the quickest thing and shoving it down my throat or not eating at all. Right. Um, You know, taking those times to draw a hot bath and put in the Epsom salts and put in the essential oil and soak in the tub and give my whole sensory experience that opportunity to use essential oils on my body and in my home for the, the, the beneficial effects physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually of essential oils, and to just bring in all the practices that nourish me on every single level. So then I can be in my highest possible health and wellness and bring that energy to the people I serve. Right. And one, of the, one of the things that I notice about you over the last five years is that, uh, you had so many healing modalities around you, you know, so much that so much experience, training, learning, um, interest from oils to crystals, to mantras, to, you know, the list goes on, right? Mm -hmm. But but what, but what I, (laughs) but what I witnessed is, and, and this is my first time sharing this with you is that a moment where you kind of, and I'm picturing you sta- like standing, looking at the water and your hand is up and it's all come to you like a magnet. Like it all just went click, 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 click and fit like in the palm of your hand with, oh, well, yeah, it's all right here. That's absolutely correct absolutely dead on accurate and I could see the image as you were describing Mm -hmm. it because you know you you said in introducing me 20 years of experience 20 plus years of experience with with spirit modalities I mean if it's out there I've researched it I've tried it I've experimented with it and what I haven't is only because it hasn't come to my attention yet I have you know I mean every possible tool technique or modality you could name right now off the top of your head I can almost guarantee it would be a hundred percent yep studied it yep (laughs) Yep. because that's what I've been doing you know my personal journey healing journey started over just about 20 years ago at the point where I finally collapsed and then I did western medicine hamster wheel for a couple of years of going from provider to provider to specialist to specialist to test to test you know, and, and tried all that and then got fed up with it. And it was in 1999, in March of 1999, I had a breast reduction. And in December of 1999, I had a hysterectomy. And it was in that time, even though those were both Western medical procedures, it was in that time that I came upon, first of all, Dr. Christian Northrup and read Women's Bodies, Women's Wisdom and the Wisdom mm. of Menopause. Mm-hmm. And as an, as an, as an, a, a step, from there, I became aware of Carolyn Mays and read Anatomy of Spirit. I became aware of Sue Monk. Well, I knew who Sue Monk Kid was from when she published Christian literature in my, my younger years. But I became aware of Dance of the Dissident Daughter, which is Sue Monk's kid, Sue Monk Kid's discovery of the divine feminine. And I became aware of Joan Borisenko, Minding the Body, Mending the Mind. And that all was a pivotal turning point for me. And it was from that point forward that I began to research and experiment with every possible alternative, holistic, energetic, spiritual tool, technique, or modality. And and I continue. I have such an inquiring mind. I just want to know. I want to (laughs) understand. I want to get it. I want to see how they fit together. I want to see how things work together. And so in a sense, what you, you know, what you brought up about this, it just coming together for me is, is definitely a super pivotal piece because 
I had so much knowledge and that sounds really vain. It's just a fact. It's just a thing. I just know. Facts. No, it's just the you truth. Know? There's nothing and, vain about it. And I had so much knowledge that in some ways I didn't know where to start when it yeah. came to serving others. Right. Cause I, well, do I teach this? Do I teach that? Do I teach the other thing? What do I do? And then all of a sudden when everything finally coalesced, what happened was my recognition is number one, women need to understand the truth about themselves. And so that involves, again, their natal astrological natal chart, in my opinion, it involves learning how to access their own Akashic records and get the information they need about past life stuff that is affecting them. And in doing those two things, well, then the third thing would be being fully aware of their full energy system, their chakras, their energy meridians, their biofield, and how all of that works. And with all of that information, they can go back and repattern their entire life because they're going to understand step by step where their wounds came in, the wounds that belong to them from their personal experience, the wounds right. that belong to them from collective patterning and programming around what it means to be a woman in the world and the wounds that are part of their family line and came to them not only um, directly through experience with their family and emotionally through experience with their family, but also energetically and epigenetically. Because at the family level, we're turning, we're turning on modul gene mod modulators, say around hypervigilance in my family. I can choose to switch off hypervigilance. I don't have to you know, carry that hypervigilance epigenetic modulator and tag any longer right, right have that power to switch off the modulation of our genes and because and, you know that and because you've done the work and 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 like you were your own guinea pig as we all are right when we, <laughs> <laughs> and so now your work supports the feminine experience through these modalities that you thread together through your experience and i mean it's just incredibly powerful work Right. And then, you know, this is where the everything clicking together piece is. Once I, I kind of really got that piece, the rest of it depends on who you are. And if I'm sitting with a client and what she's talking to me about is her digestive stuff and, you know, things related to what's going on with her food, then I can bring in the knowledge about food. Right. And we can talk about that. If she's, you know, looking for an interest in crystals or we want to do some chakra healing or chakra aligning or chakra balancing with crystals, then I bring in my knowledge of crystals. And the, the whole piece of, oh, I don't have to figure out, do I want to teach crystals? Do I want to teach essential oils? Do I want to do nutrition? Do I want to, you know, okay. A, B, C, E, e, F, G. Just start with teaching women to understand the truth about themselves through the lens of astrology, to understand their full energy system and their full power as a divine being, because I know we're coming up on time, Shan, but I really want to say this piece. We have been, women have been taught for centuries that they're second-class citizens in our human culture. But a huge, huge wound piece is we've also been taught that we are second-class spiritually and that we need true a, a, a male head of household or we need a a pastor or deacons of the church, which until recent decades were always men, or we need, you know, a priest, we need an intermediary in that we are never in our own full spiritual power. We are never the complete fullness of divine beings as women. And that's complete and utter bullshit. Absolute bullshit. And we are, and we've got to absolutely reconnect to our divine power and our divine selves. And of course, this fully involves understanding the fullness of our energy system, understanding that we are a divine, a divine energy as a soul, choosing this incarnation, you know, and then coming back to where I, I started with of understanding the truth of in your natal chart and what you came here to do, understanding your energy, and then doing the repatterning work and the reprogramming work to, to repair all those wounds and release trauma energy. And there are so many really easy modalities for that. And if do you have, do I have one minute to give a simple illustration? Absolutely. Okay. So 
one of the things that I've been doing, I've been doing a lot of local festivals, holistic and, and mind, body, spirit, and metaphysical festivals here in Maine this year, because it's a branch that I'm stepping into with my work in, in order to create local women's circles. And one of the things I've been doing, I've been presenting a workshop called Sacred Healing for Women. And the exercise we do in that workshop is simply using a combination of neuro-linguistic programming techniques and heart-mind synchrony techniques in terms of the powerful heart chakra field, energetic field. And it's looking at it, and we always do little T trauma, not big T trauma in a workshop, because of right. course, you know, big T trauma requires something entirely different. But I'll have them think of a little T trauma memory of something that, you know, just felt like a, a wound or a hurt or, or an upset of some kind. And take a snapshot of that and put that snapshot right in your right hand. So it's outside your body. This is the neuro-linguistic programming piece. Put it outside your body because it gives you some emotional distance from it when you do that. And it helps you to step into the observer state to do that. So you put that snapshot out there. Then see the version of you in that image. Notice how old you are. Notice you know, what you're wearing. Notice what's, what you are looking like and what version of you it is in that image. And lift her right out of there and bring her right into your heart center. And spend as much time as you need in your heart center giving her that version of you, whether she was five or it was two days ago or somewhere in between. Give her the love or the understanding or the acceptance or the forgiveness or the gratitude, all the high vibration emotions, whatever she needed in that moment. And just keep giving it to her and give her that and give her that and give her that until you feel yourself relax and the tears come and you, know, you feel the shift happen in your heart center. And once that point has come where you feel that shift happen, you've healed that version of you. And at that point, just absorb her, the healed version of her back into you and into your energy. And once you've done that, turn your attention back to your right hand and see that it's now a blank image and just watch it dissolve, watch it turn to ash or watch it, watch it turn to glitter, whatever, you know, imagery works right. for you and watch that image dissolve and just float away. And mm. you've built that version of you, you've integrated that version of you within you and you've dissolved that old paradigm. I of, love it. I love it. That's it. such a wonderful way to begin. Such a <sighs> wonderful technique. You made you took me right back to being a, a third grader and my teacher Mrs. Hess telling me I was a motor mouth and making me stand in the corner and stare at the corner and be quiet. And um and I've cleared that. I've cleared that, but it's a it's a good sharing because it's a it's a small T trauma, but uh that stayed with me a long time until I, I realized I could integrate and and get beyond it and be like, okay, that's that was how she behaved back in the day and and thought that that was appropriate and it was not okay and um and i and i wanted to be heard even then <laughs> and so having that little one back in my heart and and loved up and liberated and it is uh has been a big piece of my own work so i'm glad you shared that example and i'm so glad that you came to the sacred life today to talk with me and share more about your story i wish we had more time but we don't so I'm, uh, I'm going to send you off and I'd love to invite you to come back again. Oh, absolutely. Anytime, Shan. I absolutely enjoy our conversations from start to finish. And I'm so happy to be able to give this kind of information to your listeners because it's vitally important. And you know, one little 10 second thing that, to respond to what you said about the memory that came up for you. It's really important to realize we're so often trying to completely erase the memories. We're not going to erase the memories. What we're doing is getting rid of the emotional charge. Yes. Of the memories, because that's the wound. The wound is the emotional charge. And when you can take away the emotional charge around it and just see the memory without having a, an emotional reaction to it any longer, that's healing. That's a beautiful thing. That was Kat Tozer, medicine woman and women's trauma expert. You're welcome to visit Kat at mysticcat.com. 
and live true to you.org. Thanks for listening to This Sacred Life and the Divine Feminine Spotlight. Visit TransformationGoddess.com to claim our album of guided relaxations for women who do too much. And while you're there, check out our latest articles, book reviews, and resources for your goddess journey.